So we've already learned about distributive property. And I'm going to talk to you guys. And the word in the the skill that we're going to learn today is how to factor. But we can't factor anything until we understand distributive property. So I'm going to do a little review here. Um, we've got three terms. I'm going to kind of put a dot above each of them. There's one outside the parentheses and two inside the parentheses. And they're trying to combine these two terms together. But they can't because one's a variable and one is not. I'm going to mark them all. They're all positive, which makes it really easy uh, to use the, the, pr the, the operation that we need to for distributive property. And if we remember from last week, when we do distributive property, we are going to multiply. So underneath this, can everybody go ahead and put that each of these terms are positive? And let's write out the multiplication problem that we're going to have. We are going to take the 2 that's outside the parentheses, and we are going to multiply it by 7x. We then are going to get that answer for that term, and we're going to try to combine it with 2 times the term inside the parentheses, which is also positive 2. As you're writing this, when you multiply 2 times 7, you're going to, uh, well, 7x. Obviously, you're going to get... 14x. And when, when you multiply 2 times 2, you're going to get 4. And we know right away that neither one of these can be put together. We can't put variables with number. Right? Th those two terms can't be put together. But we can go ahead and say that we're trying to combine them by putting a plus sign in between them and say that this is our simplified expression. The commutative property allows us to rearrange terms when we have addition or multiplication. Since we have addition here, I can rearrange this. The other way it could look is 4 plus 14x. So how is this going to play out today for factoring? Well, what we're really doing is we're going, we went from distributive property to factoring, we are now going to go back full circle. We're going to take this expression and we are going to factor it, which means our answer for today is going to look like the distributive property where we started. This is what we're looking to get. Let's take this first one and just kind of factor it so you get an understanding of how this thing can go full circle. Everybody write down 14x plus 4. And think to yourself, in your jump count that you have, what is the largest number that can divide into both the number 14 and the number 4? It'd be 2. And this one's pretty simple because obviously we just did it. But whatever you decide is your greatest common factor, or the number that can divide into both terms that's the largest, that's what you are factoring out of the expression. And that's what goes outside the parentheses. And all that's going to happen is your terms inside the parentheses are going to appear smaller. We're simplifying them. We know that 2 can divide into 14x 7 times. So we have 7x here. We know that 2 can divide into 4 twice. And we know that those two terms can't go together. So we put a plus sign there showing that, hey, we want to combine them together. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is our factored answer. When we have our jump count filled out, factoring becomes super simple because the division is already done for us. We know what the greatest common factor is going to be just by looking at columns. If I'm looking for 18 and 30 in one of these columns, I can find it. Here's an 18, but there's no 30. Here's an 18, and here's a 30. And it looks like that's going to be the great. Look at the number that we're dividing into 18. It is 6. 6 is the greatest common factor that can go into both 18 and 30. So that's what's coming out. And that's going to be the outside piece that's going to look, be a part of our distributive property looking question.
question. We also could do it with three, but we want to find the greatest common factor. You see that 18 and 30 both are in the three column right here and right here. Now, we have to think, how many times can 6 divide into 18? Well, if you don't know, just look at your jump count. 6 goes into 18 three times, so it would go into 18q. We would write 3q as our simplified term. 6 goes into 30 how many times? Well, it says right here 5. And we should know that when we have these two terms inside the parentheses, that 3q and 5, those are terms that can't be combined. We've learned that already. We can go ahead and show that we want to combine them by putting that plus sign in between them. But this, ladies and gentlemen, is our factored expression. 6 times 3q plus 5. If we went ahead and multiplied this out using distributed property, it'd go right back to this, to 18q plus 30. Okay? So a lot of students are asking, well, Mr. Parks, I don't understand. What is our answer actually? This is it. The one that's in the box. We have factored out a 6. And we have shown that we have reduced the inside of our parentheses down to 3q and 5. Here we go. This is a factoring question that came up that a student had a question on. So I wrote it down to explain to you guys. He got a little bit stuck because when he was looking at his columns, he couldn't find 5 and 15. And I think it was because he was overlooking the fact that we can divide by the same number. 5 can go into 5 one time, and 5 can go into 15 three times. So what actually can be factored out of this expression is the number 5. What are we multiplying by now? Well, 5 goes into 5 once. We see it in our jump count, so I can write down 1c. And 5 goes into 15, we see on our jump count three times. If we needed help with division, but this division seems pretty easy when we divide by fives. There's no terms that are negative, and we can't put c's or variables with numbers, so I'm just going to go ahead and put that plus sign in there. Now, there's a, let's use my favorite word, or. How else can we write this? What's something that I didn't have to write? Something I didn't have to write if I didn't want to. We don't have to write the one in front of the C. We could just put down the letter C, and because there's only one letter C there, it means that we only have one of them. Both of these, ladies and gentlemen, are correctly written. Say that again. We absolutely can use the commutative property for the or. So if I wanted to continue, commutative property would allow me to keep five outside the parentheses. And since we have addition, I could put the three first and the C second, and it would still give us a correct answer. Five times three is 15. Five times C is 5C. So the expression would still be the same. Great question. It got a little interesting when we got further along in the lesson, and all of a sudden, two variable terms came up. And again, they weren't totally off on what they were doing. They just wanted to make sure they were correct. 30 and 40 are both in the column where 10 is. 10 can divide into 30 three times. 10 can divide into 44 times. And all we wanted to make sure that we were doing is that we were only pulling out 10 from this expression. 10 is what we multiply by. So what did we write and how did we simplify the terms inside the parentheses? Well, it was very simple. We just needed to make sure we kept the variables with them. 10 goes into 30 three times. So this is actually 3q. 10 goes into 40 four times. So we keep the r with it. Can Q's and R's actually be put together to simplify more? No, because they're two different variables. So all we do is we put the plus sign in between them to show that we want to combine them if possible, but we can't the way it sits now. And so our factored expression 10 times 3Q plus 4R is going to be correct.